Hello. We continue with episode three of the Henry George Daily Devotional. I think we will finish up the introductory, and then maybe we talk about it just a little bit. All right, here we go. It must be within the province of political economy to give such an answer. Uh, and this is referring to uh, an explanation of why there is so much poverty alongside progress. That's, that's my little comment. Uh, yeah, let me know if it's confusing when I sometimes offer my own opinion, if it's clear if I'm still reading or not. I'm not sure. Uh, I will continue. For political economy is not a set of dogmas. It is the explanation of a certain set of facts. It is the science which, in the, co in the sequence of certain phenomena, seeks to trace mutual relations and to identify cause and effect, just as the physical sciences seek to do in other sets of phenomena. It lays its foundations upon firm ground. The premises from which it makes its deductions are truths which have the highest sanction, axioms which we all recognize, upon which we safely base the reasoning and actions of everyday life, and which may be reduced to the metaphysical expressions of the physical law that, se that motion seeks the line of least resistance, viz. that men seek to gratify their desires with the least exertion. Proceeding from a basis thus assured, it processes its processes, which consist simply in identification and separation, have the same certainty. In this sense, it is as exact a science as geometry, which from similar truths relative to space obtains its conclusions by similar means, and its conclusions when valid should be as self-apparent. And although in the domain of political economy, we cannot test our theories by artificially produced combinations or conditions, as may be done in some of the other sciences, yet we can apply tests no less conclusive by comparing societies in which different conditions exist, or by, in imagination, separating, combining, adding, or eliminating forces or factors of known direction. That claim is... Uh, always a little tough for me to swallow that it can be as precise as the math and physics that I have studied when I was a student. I continue. I propose in the following pages to attempt to solve by the methods of political economy the great problem I have outlined. I propose to seek the law which associates poverty with progress and increase want with advancing wealth. And I believe that in the explanation of this paradox we shall find the explanation of those recurring seasons of industrial and commercial paralysis, which, viewed independently of their relations to more general phenomena, seem so inexplicable. Properly commenced and carefully pursued, such an investigation must yield a conclusion which will stand every test and as truth will correlate with all other truth. For in the sequence of phenomena there is no accident. Every effect has a cause and every fact implies a preceding fact. That political economy as at present taught does not explain the persistence of poverty amid advancing wealth in a manner which accords with the deep-seated perceptions of men. That the unquestionable truths which it does teach are unrelated and disjointed. That it has failed to make the progress in popular thought that truth, even when unpleasant, must make. That on the contrary, after a century of cultivation, during which it has engrossed the attention of some of the most subtle and most powerful intellects, it should be spurned by the statesmen, scouted by the masses, and relegated, in the opinion of many educated and thinking men, to the rank of a pseudoscience in which nothing is fixed or can be fixed. Must, it seems to me, be due not to any inability of the science when properly pursued, but to some false step in its premises, or overlooked factor in its estimates. And as such mistakes are generally concealed by the respect paid to authority, 
I propose in this inquiry to take nothing for granted, but to bring even accepted theories to the test of first principles, and should they not stand, freshly to interrogate, the f interrogate facts in the endeavor to discover their law. I propose to beg no question, to shrink from no conclusion, but to follow truth wherever it may lead. Upon us is the responsibility of seeking the law. For in the very heart of our civilization today, women faint and little children moan. But what that law may prove to be is not our affair. If the conclusions that we reach run counter to our prejudices, let us not flinch. If they challenge institutions that have long been deemed wise and natural, let us not turn back. And so concludes the introductory of Progress and Poverty, published in 1879. Um, yeah, I guess uh, this rings very true to me, that uh, it seems like humankind has kind of figured out how to make a bunch of stuff. Uh, food, clothing, toys, and yet there are many who still are in poverty. I'm not so sure that the condition of uh, the lowest rung of society today is worse than it was. Uh, maybe it's because we have more of a social welfare state. Um, but also maybe, maybe I overlooked the condition of a lot of the immigrant population and maybe sometimes I think maybe because uh, of like global trade, other countries perhaps um, all blend together with our own economy, and it's sort of our fault and responsibility that the third world countries are exploited and downtrodden as they are, um, perhaps. Uh, there's very localized effects, though, too. Um, yeah. And then I, I also catch myself sometimes thinking... Uh, well... I guess I guess uh, that we let we went down more of an Aldous Huxley path. If you've read Brave New World, of uh, like the nanny state, um, which is kind of funny because then when I first discovered Georgism, one of the first uh, thinkers I found out that embraced Georgism was Aldous Huxley. And he regrets not, or he would, if he were to rewrite his book, he would add in a third Georgist option. Anyway, uh, I don't know about this uh, commentary time, but um, thanks for listening. I will uh, see you next time when we start book one, chapter one. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and uh, believe.